John here. Here's liquor today number 101. It's an A minor sweet perpetual sequence. You can find a link to the tabs in the description below and basically you will sign up to my mailing list where you get a lot of practice advice and things like that as well. You can unsubscribe at any time and still have access to the tabs though. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna play it once slowly and then break it down. We start here on the 20th fret of the high E string. All right, so we're gonna go through a few different uh, positions here. Basically cover the whole neck with uh, this A minor arpeggio. So we start here with 20, 20, 17, 17, 17. So, and the way that I pick this is down, pull off, up, up. You can start with an upstroke right away if you want. Either way works because you have the pull offs, so you have time to choose whatever pick stroke you want. Uh, so, down, pull off, up, up, and we move down to 17. Uh, so we're going to have 17, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 12. Then we're going to go back again, so... Like that, and actually repeat the top three strings again. So that whole arpeggio goes like this. Uh, starting with a downstroke, because we're coming from the upstroke here. So he hit that with a downstroke. Then we move down to 12. So we got 12, 8, and then we got 10, 9. Again, we're coming from this. So we need to have a downstroke on this one. So down, pull off, up, up. Then we go down to 8. So now we're basically one octave lower. Uh, so it's exactly the same shape, just 12 frets down. So we got 8. Five, 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 and then we continue on down here. Seven, seven, eight, five, and this outlines just this um, basic six-string uh, bar chord. It's just as we add, we add these two notes uh, on both E strings. So again, from the beginning. practice wise here learn the whole thing so you see how everything is connected and then I would work on the problem areas so nothing really outrageously weird just find what gives you trouble and then repeat that uh, while making it sound good and also doing the correct motions so this one is quite annoying for a lot of people because you have this barring Boring thing you need to get through. Uh, so if we take this one, and just move it down to let's say a D minor instead. So we have a uh, 13, 10, 10, 10. Uh, and just start repeating it here. So we have a uh, uh, downstroke, pull off, up, up, downstroke, pull off, up, up. And a good way to find exactly how much to bar is to start here, take this note, and you won't end up on you know like a regular fretted note on this note. Then you, from here, you bar the, the rest of the arpeggio, and then you sort of pluck the string quite hard, and you get a quite distinct feel of where on your fingertip you need to fret the high E string in this case. So you end up on the correct, in the correct position down here on the G string. Because it's very easy to uh, not do that, and then if you're not used to playing these, you're going to probably overbar or underbar sometimes. Underbar just means that you, you're not actually reaching the, the G string here, right? So, so this is a really good way to find out how to perfectly start a bar from a higher string uh, from your hand and your fingers. So you basically take uh, whatever, whatever bar you're working on, in this case, you know, we have this one. Uh, you take that note and then go back up, 
pluck the string and get a feel for where you should be. And then you try to be consistent when you practice. And this is where all the slow practice comes in. So slow practice is not necessarily better just because it's slow, but it's because you have time to direct your movements. You have time to focus on the correct technique. Uh, but again, if you didn't know, you know, if you just sit there and practice this slowly, but you do it Dif uh, different way each time it's not going to help you so you need to find uh, the correct placement for your finger and then work on that uh, and I like moving it around the fretboard one it's less boring but also you get to experience all the different uh, feels and once you've done this for a while and when, when you work on these arpeggios it really will feel weird to you if you over bar or under bar it. So you will find this, you will find this barring quite uh, intuitive after a while, but it's an informed intuition because you, you form the habit, right? So really make sure that you're consistent when you practice this. Uh, another tip here for the articulation is to cut each note short. So if we do this one, for example, just go like this. So I'm not bouncing the fingers, I'm just letting go of the pressure. So this one I don't because I want to do the pull off. But as soon as I hit this note, I try to just release the string so it doesn't ring. And I mean, this doesn't sound good at a slow tempo, but when you speed it up, these are the notes and you have, you have these big gaps in between. Uh, when you speed it up, the notes will be the same uh, length, but the gaps will disappear. So, and you will have a way more articulated sound. So, so if you have trouble with uh, strings ringing into each other, this can really be a game changer for you. And another point about the rolling technique here is that it's depending on your finger. Uh, you, you're going to do some of this where you sort of press it in a bit, but you can also and should help by pushing your wrist back and forth. So, because what makes this rolling technique work is that we actually only really fretting one string at a time. So we're trying to sort of roll over that string, uh, and, and that's a you know timing thing like everything else on guitar playing. But if you look at my wrist now, so that enables me to do this without having to, you know, destroy my finger basically. Uh, and it's really good because people will have different abilities to, you know, how bendy their, their fingers are. But you can always do this uh, wrist compensation thing. So give that a try if you haven't had any luck with this before. Alright, that's it for this one. If you have any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.